Welcome to the EXP group discussion of ACCA paper F2, Management Accounting. Now today we want to spend a few minutes to talk about an extremely crucial and core concept in, in this paper, and that is that of absorption costing. Now, absorption costing is a method in which all manufacturing costs that means whether they are direct or indirect or variable and fixed are treated as product costs. While non-manufacturing costs, that means the selling and general administrative expenses would be treated as period costs. We're going to leave those aside for the moment. We want to focus only on the universe of production costs now and create a link between direct and indirect costs, and the unit product itself. Now, it may be useful to look at the following diagram in order to understand how we treat uh, these um, production costs in a step-by-step -step, uh, way. If we take our total production costs here, uh, we can say, okay, direct costs, which are directly attributable to products are quite easy to handle. This would be direct labor and materials and so on. There's a direct allocation process on a per unit basis. We can allocate directly attribute direct costs to our cost unit. That's easy. The difficulty begins when we go in this direction here to indirect costs, i.e. overheads, and we need to find the proper way to be able to link our indirect costs with a cost unit. Now the next step uh, consists of splitting up the these overhead costs among so-called cost centers e existing in the uh, factory. We have to make a distinction here between um, various uh, units. We may have production uh, halls A and B and a service cost center which uh, is distinguished from the production centers because the products themselves do not pass through service centers. These may be, for example, uh, a cafeteria or a warehouse uh, for uh, raw materials or uh, a, a clinic, for example. So cost centers which, are, which exist to support the uh, production centers themselves. Production centers, uh, cost centers A and B here, are production centers through which the products themselves um, pass through and, and are processed. Now we speak of uh, either allocating or apportioning um, overhead costs to these various cost, uh, cost centers. Um, an allocation method may be if there are, for example, indirect materials that can be specifically split up because they're destined for these different cost centers, then an allocation process would take place. If we have shared overhead costs, for example, uh, rent, if there was one uh, uh, monthly rental charge over all of the, uh, across the entire factory, then we would have to split up that cost on some kind of apportionment basis. It might be on the basis of uh, square meters, surface area. So the step here of splitting up our overheads and, and locating them at the respective cost centers becomes um, the allocation or apportionment uh, step. After that, we need to reapportion the costs that have been grouped under the service cost centers, and there may be more than one, and those that have to be reapportioned and placed with the production centers. So at the end of the day, we have taken 100% of the overhead costs and they are now located in the or among the production cost centers. So the total costs, overhead costs of the, of the cost centers will equal 100%. Remember, we are not creating or losing overhead costs along the way. We're starting with a fixed monetary amount and the exercise here on the right side of this diagram is to group and allocate and to apportion these overhead costs to the respective production 
um, departments. The final step is then consists of absorbing the those overhead costs into a, into a cost per unit basis. Now, this absorption of overhead costs uh, into the cost units has to be done on a pre-selected uh, basis, uh, a, a predetermined overhead absorption rate, which may be based, for example, on direct labor hours which are consumed in the production process. Other bases could be uh, machine hours, for example, or um, product units themselves. The key at the end of the day is to be able to uh, build a cost card for our products in which we can define a dollar variable overhead cost and a dollar fixed overhead cost on a per unit basis. And in this way, as production proceeds, the factory is able to absorb these various overhead costs and account for them. Finally, one word about inventory valuation. If we are um, external reporting requirements require that we use the absorption costing basis for valuing inventory. Therefore, our fully absorbed uh, production costs per unit will be the basis um, for valuing the items that are produced and placed in inventory prior to their sale or and delivery to customers. Now, in contrast to absorption costing, let's turn our attention to, to another method of grouping costs known as marginal costing, which focuses on the variable or the marginal costs generated in a business and considers fixed costs as, a, as period costs. Now, central to marginal costing is the idea of contribution. Contribution is the difference between sales revenue achieved and variable costs that are incurred as a result of producing and selling um, uh, goods. Now, the variable costs in the contribution definition, keep in mind, uh, refer to both production and non-production costs. So it's taking into account, uh, it's, cut, it's carving up, let's say, the universe of costs in a different way from absorption costing. The practical usefulness of, of the marginal costing concept is it allows the company to be able to uh, express in monetary terms how much its costs will rise when it produces and sells an additional out of, uh, unit of output, and the contribution itself captures that amount which is available, uh, which is generated by the business and available to cover fixed costs. In our next time, we will work through a numerical example that, which will make the marginal costing and the absorption costing methods um, very clear. Thank you.